Hi, I'm Matt from eSpares. Now, if you've had problems starting your petrol lawnmower, you'll know just how frustrating that can be. I'm going to run through some of the basic checks that we need to go through to make sure that your mower starts first time, every time. Now, I've got a Qualcast Classic Petrol 35S, but these checks will be applicable for, for any type of Qualcast, indeed any type of petrol lawnmower. And let's start with fuel. It's a standard four-stroke engine, takes ordinary unleaded petrol. Now, the thing about petrol is it degrades over time, it goes off. So if you've left petrol in your mower over the winter, the best thing to do is to drain that off first and put some fresh petrol in there. Two things I want to drain. Um, drain the main fuel reservoir just by uncoupling the fuel line there and drain that off into a bowl. And then you can see on the carburetor here, there's a little uh, release valve there that'll just drain the fuel off the carburetor as well and then make sure we've got fresh petrol in. Let's check the oil. The dipstick on this Qualcast is at the back here. Just give that a wipe and uh, pop it back in. I think it looks all right. Yeah, that's just over half full, so that's fine. If you do need to top up, then you top up at the front there. Make sure you're using proper lawnmower engine oil um, obviously, if yours is a two-stroke, then use two-stroke oil and that gets mixed directly into your fuel. So spark plug next. It's a standard 14mm lawnmower spark plug. And I'm using a 21mm socket, which is specifically for spark plugs. It's going to make sure I don't damage the porcelain or the top of the engine. And we'll take that out now. Spark plugs do have a limited life. It's typically around about 150 hours for this type of spark plug. And as you can see, there's a fair bit of sooting, a fair bit of carbon on the electrodes there. It's not actually in bad nick. I think you'll just clean that up with a wire brush um, and get a bit of fine sandpaper between the two electrodes. Just make sure it's all nice and clean. I'm actually just gonna put a brand new one in here. Make sure you're getting the right spark plug for your particular mower. They're available for all makes and models on the East Bears website. And then just tighten that up. Not too tight, just make sure you don't overdo it. There we go, we're gonna get a good spark every time now. So a few things I just wanna check before I fire it up. Just the cables, the belts and the gears. Now if I take off the belt housing cover here, that's just held into place by these four hex head screws. You could use a Torx bit in there. And if I engage the rear roller, just make sure that that's torsioning the belt when it's in the on position, that's fine. Likewise, if I engage the cutting disc, yeah, that's putting some torsion in that belt, fine. Just have a look at the belts, make sure they're not fraying, there's no sign of damage or wear, they're fine. And these gears, I don't know if you can see in there, there are actually three nylon gears. They can break quite easily. And you can see a colleague of mine actually replacing those in another video. Uh, but that all looks fine. Now if I just check the throttle. So in the fully off position, you should be able to see that just cuts the power to the spark plug. That's fine. And then as I open the throttle, you should be able to see it's just opening the carburetor there. If that needs any adjustment, this little screw here just changes the position at which it opens the carb. Okay, let's get it started. Let's push the throttle all the way back, all the way open. Uh, I'm not going to give it any choke because it's quite warm, we're inside. Obviously if it's on a cold day, then you want to give it a bit of choke. It's probably worth showing you actually how the choke works. If I take the air filter off, here you can see that's the air filter and the choke restricts or chokes the flow of air going into the carb just gives us a much more petrol rich uh, mixture going in which is what we need on a, on a cold day because the air doesn't mix with the petrol quite so well. Okay let's give it a go it's a bit of an awkward height for me here on the table but let's see if we can do it. first time. Now if yours doesn't start the problem is probably going to be in the carburetor. Let's take a closer look. 
So before I open up the carb, I just want to disconnect my fuel line and drain the fuel in the tank down into my can. Bound to spill a little bit. So with my fuel line out of the way, and if I just get the air filter out of the way as well, I just need to drain the remaining fuel which is sat in the car, but I can do it on this release valve here. Now, I'm just going to try and get as much paper towel under there as possible. I can just soak that up. There we go, that's emptying nicely. Okay, let's just open the nut on the bottom of the carburetor now and see what we've got inside. So as I undo the bottom screw, the float chamber comes away there. I'll just pop those to one side. And here we have the float itself. Now I'm just going to push through this hinge pin and then I can pull the whole of the float mechanism away. So the two things I'm concerned about are this float piston that sits on top of the float there and rises and falls with it and that lets fuel into the float chamber. Now the bottom screw that we took out has fuel jets in here. We're going to need to clean both of these things thoroughly. For these jets, I'm just going to run a piece of wire through there and the one through the middle just to make sure that we've got no de debris in there and give the piston itself a good clean with compressed air or you can get a specialist carburetor cleaner. Um, it's also a good idea to spray that cleaner or the compressed air around the rest of the carburetor. Just check the, um, the gasket seal as well. This one's in perfectly good condition, but if that's looking a bit of a mess, then it's probably a good idea to replace that as well. Okay, let's just put the carburetor back together. You can see on the float chamber, there is a, a shallow end and a deep end. Make sure you get the shallow end where the hinge of the float goes. And then just put the screw back in. Don't forget to reconnect the fuel line and of course put the air filter back on. There we go. Top up with fresh fuel and we're ready to go. There we go. That should deal with most of the problems associated with getting your petrol lawnmower to start. Spare parts for Qualcast and lots of other makes of mower are available on the eSpares website. Thanks for watching.